Hi TCC friends, this is Bonnie here, back with part two of my rolling pin workout. This is just an ordinary old rolling pin. And like I said, if you don't have one, um, a dowel would do, a piece of PVC piping, even a wooden spoon would do. But many of us do have a rolling pin at home and it turns out to be a great Pilates prop. So we're gonna start this mat workout on our hands and knees and work the stability of our shoulders and the whole body in a little bit of arm work and leg work put together. So make sure that your wrists are right under your shoulders and your knees right under your hips. Engage your pelvic floor and your abdominals. And then I have a roller in my right hand and I'm gonna lift it to the side and lower it without twisting my body. Exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale on the exhale we're going to hold that arm up and then bend the elbow so you see that the elbow is still at about the level of the shoulder now stretch the arm out and we're going to use the opposite leg to stretch it out onto the mat toes are touching and come back in Exhale and inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Lengthen, bend. Lengthen, bend. Lengthen. Keep the leg lengthened with the toe on the floor. Drop your straight arm right next to your front leg. Then the back leg and the front arm are going to lift together and lower and lift and lower and lift and lower and lift and lower we have four more it's four and three and two and one now going to freeze in that position with arm and leg lifted then you're going to bend your knee and bend your elbow and kick back and two and three and four, we have four more. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, two more. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Put the roller down. If this wrist has taken a lot of work, then take your hand and pull the, the aching wrist hand off the bones, or perhaps interlace your fingers and just work those wrists and then we'll move to the other side okay so I'm just going to bring it in my far hand and then have make sure that you see how my shoulder is up I want to bring that shoulder down make sure my belly isn't sagging and my tail lifting but get a more neutral back make sure the crown of my head is pointing forward and I'm really lengthening from my tailbone to the top of the head and then my back arm, in this case, is going to lift up and lower down, and lift up and lower down. Now, of course, you want to twist to the side where the arm is lifting, and you're going to resist that temptation to do that. We've got two more. Exhale, inhale, exhale and hold, and simply bend the elbow. Now, as the elbow straightens to the wall, the opposite leg goes out and comes back in. It touches the floor and comes back in. We've got four more. It's four and three and two and one. Keep the leg where it is. Drop the arm down so that the straight arm is under your shoulder. It's going to move back to your hip as the leg simultaneously lifts. So here we go, it's up and down, and up and down. Toes are pointing to the floor, kneecap is pointing to the floor, pelvis is stable. Two more, two, one, hold the arm and the leg up, bend the knee, bend the elbow, and straighten them out. Bend and straighten, bend, and straighten, bend, 
and straighten. You've got four and three and two and one. Come back in and again sit on your heels for a second and try to get that wrist to be a little bit more comfortable. Many of us have sensitive wrists. Mine happen to be fairly strong, but I could feel that. Okay, and you're just going to move those wrists around after you interlace your fingers. Good. Okay, so I'm going to have you do some quad extensions now. So we're going to be kneeling up. And the rollers, I know that you lose my head here, but it's not really important to see my head. The roller is going to be held in both arms above the head. Okay, now you don't want to be in a little flexion in the hip. You want to be really straight. And you're simply going to lean back. You can have your toes pointed like me. If you prefer, you can have your toes tucked under, whichever you prefer. And as you lean back, Keep your body straight line from your shoulder to your thigh and the, the roller comes down. Hold it here for a second and come all the way up without flexing those hips, without going into any kind of a back bend. Let's go again. We're gonna go down and we're gonna come back up. Now for those of you who walk, hike, bike, run, this is a killer because your quads are really tight and strong but it's really good. If you get them lengthened, they'll be more balanced. And come back up. We've got two more like this. It's two. And one more. Good. Now we're gonna add a movement to this. So go back. And as you come up, instead of lifting your arms, bend your elbows and bring it into your chest, the roller, as if you're doing a high row, and then go back, and then it goes above your head. So it's a four-part move. You lean, you come up in a high row, you straighten your arms as you go back, you lift above your head. We're gonna do two more like this. We're gonna go back, come up with a row, go back, come back up, tailbone down, buttock muscles pulling down, and come back up. Good. Now we're gonna make one more change. Instead of coming up when you pull into that high row, I want you to stay in the lean, and as you high row, you go into a little back bend. Now be careful that back bend doesn't come into your low back. The back bend should be in your thoracic or upper back as much as you can control it. That means you really have to pull your quads up and your tailbone down and fix your pelvis. All right, so let's go. Arms above your head and you're going to lean back. Now stay in the lean, come into a high row and try to get yourself into the back bend. You pull your shoulders down, lift your chest up, then stay in the lean as you straighten out your arms, straighten out your body and come all the way back up. We have three more just like that. You're going down, you're doing a high row, but not coming up, you're just simply going into a back bend. Remember, tailbone forward, navel up, chest up. And come out and up, good, two more. Go back. So you're changing the shape of your upper back, not the shape of your lower back. Stretch your arms out, get yourself to a more neutral position, and then come up. Last one, you're going back, you're bending your elbows, lifting your chest, squeezing your shoulder blades together and down. Reach your arms out, adjust your neck, and come all the way up until you're in a straight line. Okay, so we're in a good position now come onto our stomachs. Let's do that because it's efficient. Okay, so we're gonna lay right down on our stomachs and have the rolling pin above your head and have your hands at the edges of the rolling pin. Have your feet as wide as the mat. You wanna have your toes pointed and you're pressing down into all the joints of the knuckles of the feet. You're gonna lift your kneecap Make sure your pubic bone is down on the mat, but your tummy is slightly hollowed up 
And those two actions give a little tilt to the pelvis into neutral because most of the time when we flop down on the mat, we have a little bit of an anterior tilt going on and we want to get rid of it. Okay, so hands on the roller. You're going to keep your arms long. Slight bend in the elbow is okay. Pull your abs in. Prepare by pulling up on your pelvic floor and start rolling the rolling pin towards you and come up into a little thoracic extension. And then go down. Inhale to come up. Shoulder blades go back and down. Exhale to go down. Inhale to come up. Exhale to go down. Inhale to come up. Hold it up. And then really make sure your shoulders are down because I'd like you to swivel your neck in one direction and swivel your neck in the other direction. Go in the first direction and the second direction. Don't let those shoulders hike. First direction and second direction. Come back to the center. Roll yourself forward. Let the roller be where it is and have one hand over the other. And you're gonna put your forehead on your hands. Parallel your legs, okay? And you're gonna scoop out your abs, pubic bone down, navel up, and you're just gonna kick your butt with your heels. Kick and release, and kick and release, and kick and release, okay? Not too hard. And if you felt your hips lifting, you wanna avoid the hip lift when you do that. Instead, press your hips down into the mat because we're gonna do that as we roll the roller in. So we're combining the first and the second exercises. Are we ready? Okay, so you're gonna roll the roller in with straight arms, shoulders moving down, and kick your butt. And come back. And hamstrings are firing. Upper back is firing. Let's do two more. One more. And come down. Again, fold your hands one on top of the other. Maybe put the other one on top this time. Have your knees a little bit wide. Bend your knees as much as you can. Turn your toes out and your heels in. And avoid the little hip lift. I want you to squeeze your heels together like crazy and press the front of your hip points down into the mat and release. And squeeze, drawing the heels toward the butt and release. You wanna feel the energy of that squeeze go all the way up into your buttocks and release. And squeeze and release. Let's do three more. Squeeze and release and squeeze enough that maybe you lift your thighs and release and squeeze and lift and release. One more. Squeeze and lift and release. Straighten out your legs. Take your rolling pin and put it across the back of your thighs. Have your palms facing the floor with the thumbs out. And you're gonna hold on to the edges of the rolling pin. Okay, so now my shoulders are a bit protracted. I'm laying on my stomach, so I wanna wake up my body, press into my toes, lift the kneecaps, pubic bone down, stomach hollowed out, do a shoulder roll to bring those shoulders away from the floor. And then I'm going to lift my shoulders up as my upper body lifts up and reach the roller to my heels and then go down. Reach it to the heels and go down. Reach to the heels and go down. One more time. Reach to the heels and hold. While you're holding, pull up on your abdominals a little bit more and float your legs up. And go down. If that one was okay for you, we're going to add heel beats. Okay, we'll probably do 20, 30 of them. So the toes will point out, the heels will connect, and I want you to connect as much of your inner thigh all along your leg as you can. So we'll come up into that extension, the little smooth extension, 
lift the legs and beat the heels together. Here we go. The hands are on the rolling pins, thumbs out, palms down, shoulders rolling down and back, stomach hollowing out. Keep your toes down as you lift your upper body and re refresh the abdominal contraction and lift your legs, flex your feet. And here we go with the heel beats. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Stop. Put your feet down. Put your upper body down. Bring the rolling in front of you. Put your hands under your shoulders and push yourself up and back until you're sitting on your heels into a nice shell stretch. And then flip yourself over. Don't lose your rolling pin. You know how important that is to us. And we're gonna have the rolling pin underneath our legs and sit up straight. Okay, so I have the rolling pin up by my knees and first I'm going to curve my back into a C curl and curve and lengthen my arms. So I really want the back curved but not the shoulders hiked. The shoulders go down and then I'm going to go down to the floor rolling under the back of my thigh and coming back up and roll and release and roll and release we have one more roll release come all the way up and now you can bend your elbows draw your forehead to your knees and straighten your back let's do that one more time okay so you're going to keep the roll if you're moving particularly you should feel very neutral in the back right now and then tuck your tail under let the pelvis tilt let your arms lengthen to wherever they're going to lengthen Keep the C-curve, if anything, intensify the C-curve, but the shoulders are relaxed. And you're going to roll down and roll up and roll down and roll up and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale one more time. Exhale and inhale. Bend your elbows, forehead to knee and straighten your back. Let's bring the roller on top of our knees now and reach the arms out. Okay, shoulders down, get yourself regrouped. Then you're gonna tuck under, do the half roll back, make sure your knees are just staying parallel. And then we're gonna come up an inch and down an inch, and up an inch and down an inch. It's the same as we were doing, but it feels a little different. Bring it two more, five, one more, six, and pull those abs in and come all the way up. Maybe get in front of your knee with the roller and straighten your back. We're gonna add a twist now. Reach your arms out and we go down to a comfortable place that you can maintain the C curve. Then I want you to bring your elbows, bend them and bring the roller in. Twist to one direction and reach your arms out. Bring it back into your chest, twist to the other direction, bring your arms out, bring it into the chest, and go to the first direction, and come back, and go to the second direction, come back, one more in either direction, first, and second, roll up, catch the front of your knees, and stack your back. Okay, variation number three coming up. It's gonna be a lift and lower of the arms. So for this one, I would really like you to have your palms facing upward, not down when you're holding the roller. So I'm gonna flip my palms, reach the roller out, my thumbs are out. Okay, so I was leaning too much. Let's get myself straight. And then I'm gonna go down to a comfortable position. Now the body doesn't move. The arms are going up and down four times. 
And every time those arms go up, you know the load increases on your abdominals. You can feel that. On the last one, you're gonna hold it up, arms, upper arms next to your ears, and bend your elbows like we did in the standing room. Bend your elbows and straighten. Bend your elbows, straighten. Bend your elbows, straighten. And then roll yourself up. Catch the roller in front of your kneecaps and straighten your back. We've got one more and it involves passing the roller. So why don't we hold the roller like that with one hand over the other. Get yourself up to a nice straight back. Reach your arms out and you're gonna go back to a spot that you can maintain and really make sure that your abdominals are holding you. All right, the roller's gonna be in the left hand. You're gonna open out, lift it to the ceiling, pass it and go down. Now go to the right, lift it to the ceiling, come back to the center and go down. Left hand goes out and up to the center and down. Right hand goes out and up to the center and down. Now the roll is gonna be in the right hand as you go out and then up to the center and down and out and up to the center and down and out and up to the center and down. One more, out, up to the center and down. Come all the way up, stack your back and let's see if we can make ourselves onto our back. So really easily just allow yourself to go down. Let's have one leg stretched on the floor with the toes pointing up and the other leg reaching to the ceiling. Now you can have your hands down by your hips and if your hips are a little wobbly today, I suggest you might wanna do that. If your hips are really steady today, you could bring the rolling pin up to the ceiling and you're gonna to try to do single leg circles with that rolling pin in place. Now make sure that you're not protracting your shoulders off the floor and tilting your chin. You wanna have a nice long neck and shoulder blades down on the floor, okay? So point your toe and you're gonna circle inward and then outward and try not to rock and roll. I always have a hard time personally trying to keep stability when my arms are not there to help me. And one more time, and if it's too much for you, put your hands down right by your side. Go in the opposite direction. Two more. One more. Good. Put the rolling pin in back of the leg in the air, and you're gonna roll it up the back of your leg without sitting up. You're just gonna pull that leg towards you and roll it down. Arms are long. You're rolling it toward you, stretching those hamstrings and rolling down. Roll it up, roll it down. One more. Roll it up, roll it down. We're gonna switch legs, right leg on the floor, left leg to the ceiling. I'm having a hard time stabilizing my hips, but I'm gonna still challenge myself to have those arms in the air so that I teach myself how to do this. So straighten the leg as much as your leg will straighten. And you're gonna circle and pause at the top. Inhale, start, exhale, come around, pause at the top, three, Two more, four, one more, five, good. Now we're gonna go in the opposite direction, away from the body, across the body and pause. And two, and three. We have two more, four, last one, five, good. Roller goes in back of the leg, and you roll up, bringing that leg toward you, and roll down. Feels good. Up, and down, and up, and down. It's reminiscent of 
the rollers that they use in, in the weight room sometime to work out really tight muscles. Hold it up here and just hold for a second. And then come down. Great. Okay? You want to have both legs on the floor for a second. You're going to be neutral to begin with, with a normal curve in the low back. Take a moment to draw the ribs together on the top of your body. Pull them down towards your frontal hip points. You should feel your low back go down toward the mat. Pick up your roller. Pick up one leg into tabletop. You're in imprint. Bring the other leg up into tabletop. Hold the roller at its edges, shoulders down in the socket. Okay, you want to lift your head for a second and reach your arms and legs forward and bring them back. And reach them forward and bring them back. Reach them forward. Now as you bring it back, can you lift your upper body more and reach for your ankles and really crunch up. That means not lifting the hips. It means lifting the upper body. And we'll do two more. It's two, one more, one, and put the legs down. Have the roller in your right hand. Have the right arm reaching over your head. Use your left hand to support your head and your left leg to be reaching out towards the wall in front of you, the two knees are more or less at the same line. The left leg, this one, the long one, is gonna be your moving one. And as you bend it in, I want you to come up and cross over the body with the roller in hand, and then bring it back to the mat. Exhale, and inhale, and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, Inhale, we have four more here, it's four, and three, two more, two, and one. Good, now bring the leg in, then refresh your imprint, bring the other leg up, and have the roller pass from the right hand to the left hand. So the left leg, the one that's been moving, is still going to be moving. Left arm is above your head. This time, as the leg goes out, you come up with the roller and cross over the right. And do it again. Two. And three. Good. And four. Really twist that body, but keep the hips really still. We've got four more. Four. And three, two more, two, and one, good. Moving leg goes down on the floor. Arm stays with the roller in it, presses over the head, and you have your right leg reaching out. So we're gonna be coming to the same side that we've just been going to. So as the leg pulls in, you're crossing and reaching crossing and reaching. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We have four and three and two and one. Excellent. Bring that leg in. We're going to refresh your imprint. Bring the left leg up again. You're going to pass it into your right arm, right? And still it's the left arm, the left leg moving. So you're going to bring it out. And as it comes in, you cross out and in and out and in and out and in. It's four and three, two more, two and one and then go down on the mat. Keep your legs in tabletop, refresh your imprint. Okay, make sure that things are good. All right, we're gonna start this very simply without the roller. 
So the inner edges of your feet will stay together as your knees open into a diamond shape and then close. Open and close. We're just trying to get rotation of the femur bone in the hip socket. Open and close. We have two more. Open, close, open, close. Now let's add a leg extension to this. So we'll open, close, reach, bring back in. Open, close, reach. Now the lower you reach, the more you're challenging your imprint. Reach and return. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Let's do two more. One more. Good. Now let's add a third element. Take your roller in your hand, bring it above your head, or to the ceiling would probably do, whichever you prefer. So as you open your legs with the feet connected, I would like you to lift up and reach the roller towards your ankles, and then come back and reach your legs out. Upper body lifts to the ankles, then your legs go out. You open, lift, go down, close, reach, and open, lift, go down, close, reach, and open, lift, go down, close, reach. Can we do three more? Open, lift, go down, close, reach. Come back, open, lift, go down, close, reach, and open, lift, go down, close, reach, and put your feet on the ground. Maybe put the roller right against your buttocks if your arms are long enough to do that. I like to have my palms facing up because it externally rotates my arm bone in the shoulder socket and helps me keep my shoulders down. Bring your heels in and try to think about pulling the roller apart. And you'll notice that as you pull the roller apart, your shoulder blades go down more firmly on the mat. They may even come together a little bit. And in this position, you want to rock your pelvis a little bit and then lift one vertebra at a time off the mat, starting with your tailbone, until you're in a nice straight line from your knees to your shoulders and roll down. Let's do three more like that. You go into an imprint. You go into a slight pelvic tilt and then press into your heels and reluctantly release one vertebra from the time. Now you're on your shoulder blades and your feet. Now you sink your sternum and you roll down, trying to be as sinuous as you can. Think caterpillar, think slinky, think roller coaster. Up, good, and down. And let's do one more. Up, and down. Okay, roll yourself up and sit up. You're gonna fold your underneath leg till the knee is pointing at me. And you're gonna fold your back leg, the, the, not the hip on which you're sitting, but the hip that's in the back, and bring that heel in front of the ankle of the other foot. Okay, you want the roller in your far hand, the same hand as the side where the leg is pointing to the ceiling. All right now we're gonna come up into a modified side bend. So you wanna make sure that your hand on the floor is in line with the front knee, well, at least toward the front knee. You don't wanna be back here because you're gonna be coming up and forward. All right, so you press into the arm on the ground, you press into the bottom leg, squeeze your glutes, lift up, bring your hips forward, and reach over your head. You want to think about your hips being higher than your head, and then you're going to sit down. Okay, let's do that again. Come up and over, exhale, and inhale, and exhale, 
and inhale. We have two more. Exhale, and inhale. On the last one, you're gonna stay over there. Exhale, and then bring your arm up to the ceiling. Okay, you wanna pivot the, uh, the front leg a little bit so it's more out to the front, and straighten out your bottom leg. So now you're in a supported side plank. Take the top arm, and without moving your hips, Move your upper body so you're bringing it under the armpit of the other and bring it up to the ceiling. And exhale, twist, and inhale, reach. And exhale, twist, and inhale, reach. We have two more. Twist and reach. One last time. Twist and reach. Hold it there just like this. If you want to test yourself, stack your feet or stagger your feet and hold the side plank. And then just bend your knees and bend your hips and come down. Let's try the other side. Okay, so you have your knees bent. You're sitting on one hip, even though you're trying to be vertical. And the heel of the top leg is quite close to the front of the ankle of the back leg. Now I'm sitting with my hand to the back and I know that's not gonna work. My hand has to be, I don't like it right under the shoulders because I want a little bit of space and I want it to be toward the front knee. It doesn't have to be exactly at the front knee, okay? The roller is in my outer hand and remember when I come up, I'm pressing into the bottom knee and the top foot and I'm bringing my hips forward. So let's go. Remember, don't leave the hips back here, bring them forward and sit down and go over and sit down think hips higher than head and sit down and over and sit down on this one we're going to come over and then just bring the hand up to the ceiling move your top leg slightly forward and the underneath leg straightens out right so the top arm now, keep your hips stable. You're gonna rotate through the ribs and then come back. Rotate and come back. Rotate and come back. We've got two more. Exhale and inhale. Exhale, inhale. You can either just hold this modified plank or stretch out your legs and hold the full plank. You can have your legs staggered, or you can have them stacked. And then bend your knees, flex your hips, and come down. Okay, you're gonna reach your legs forward towards me, and flex your feet a little bit. Okay, you wanna sit up tall. And we're gonna finish up with three movements. We're gonna do mermaid to either side, or side bends to either side. And then we're gonna come forward into a forward flexion. All right, so you have the, hopefully, the roller in, let's have it in your right hand. Okay, and have the hand out. And keeping your chest lifted, you're gonna bend the elbow of your left arm and stretch over. Now make sure that the left sit bone is really hugging into the mat. And come back up. Pass the roller and go to the other side. Now you've got your left sit bone digging into the mat. Come back up and go to one side again and come back. Go to the other side and come back. Now take the roller in your hands and if you can, you can flex your feet. All right, if you don't want to, you can also point your toes. I'm gonna to reach the roller up. Okay, maybe it'd be kind of fun to lift up out of my sit bones, get length in the side body, and I'm gonna reach forward toward my toes and kind of roll out the top of my foot. Roll it and roll it and roll it. Now I'm gonna flex my feet and see if I can get the roller to the other side of my feet somewhere. 
pull back on the roller so that you feel the calf stretch. Pull back on your hip creases. Press your thighs as much as you can into the floor. Pull your tummy muscles in. Your back is somewhat rounded here. And you just feel this, I think it's a delicious stretch. You may or may not agree. And then release it and roll the roller up the front of your body until you're sitting up straight. And that's what we have for today. And I hope you've enjoyed the rolling pin workout. We'll see what we can come up with next time. Have a wonderful week. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay compliant with what people are asking you to do for social distancing. I look forward to being with you all again really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.